absent. Sorry, Whalen. Here. Zappa, absent. Okay. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Chair would entertain a motion to approve the minutes from the January 6th board meeting. I'll recommend approval. I'll second. Were there any changes or corrections to the minutes? I know George. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, look to oh, George. It's Colleen. <laughs> Colleen. He's Colleen good. is the troublemaker this uh -huh. week? Yeah. On the under public safety, it said the meeting is Friday at 5:30. Should have been Thursday at 5:30. Are you on page four of the minutes? Page three. Page three. Second paragraph from the bottom. Public safety. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And that is the meeting that was. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, let's see. So instead of is, it should say was? No. Okay, because I'm trying to back the dates up and it's not. Okay. Let's change it to Thursday. Okay. Friday to Thursday, that's all. Okay. okay. All I'm saying is it's the meeting that was on that date. We had it. Okay. Okay. Uh, all in favor of the uh, motion to approve the minutes with the one change signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Any comments from the floor on items that will not be on the agenda tonight? All right. Seeing none, we'll move on. Uh, plan Commission. There, is, there are no items from the Plan Commission, so we'll. There was no meeting. And there was no meeting. Right. Finance, uh, we'll be combining items A and B kind of in our discussions. We, uh, as you can see by your minutes, we have the, the normal claims for December and January, uh, as well as the costs related to the uh, St. Croix Storage Fire Department. Uh, St. Croix Storage Fire, uh, which occurred back in uh, December. Uh, just as a quick uh, point of summary, uh, the village has an agreement with uh, the City of Hudson in that the agreement we have provides for fire protection for which we pay an annual fee. That contract covers about 98% of all the costs that would ever be typically associated with fire suppression, as the term is correctly used. With respect to the fire in uh, in the shop yards uh, at St. Croix storage facility. Obviously, there were a significant number of expenses which fall into the extraordinary category, like uh, using more foam, which is a rare commodity, or is rarely used in, in a typical house fire, um, which was used by both the City of Hudson as well as by uh, almost all of the mutual aid uh, departments. There were total of 46, 43 fire departments who were called called into service. So we had some bills from them which totaled about $11,000. We had, um, sorry, I got it. Uh, it was about 13455 from other fire departments. Uh, there was a total amount of foam over and above what would normally be included, totaling 11329 And then there were other support things which were not fire departments, uh, which totaled $19,000, the majority of which was one of the independent contractors that was required to bring in on semi, two backhoes, 
uh, front end loaders, forklifts, and other equipment which were here for approximately 14 hours. Uh, those fall under the extraordinary expense. Now, even though the village has the obligation to the city to pay those, the village also has the opportunity to recover that from the property owner, and the village will be doing so. Um, so the recommendation from the finance committee is that we pay our normal uh, monthly uh, non-recurring bills as well as those costs that were associated with the fire department uh, experience back in December. Now, the current claims add up to about uh, $43,915.69. Uh, there is one bill in there for, for, for $4,000, which we're not paying at this point in time because we think and have been told it will be reduced. So therefore, uh, as the uh, chair of finance, I would make the same, I'll make the same motion that we did in finance to approve the December 2008 non-recurring claims totaling $15,617.32 and the January 2009 non-recurring claims totaling $115,742.84 and the December 2008 <coughs> fire claims totaling $39,915.69. Those are claims to date. For a total non-recurring claims for the <coughs> of 171,315.85. So I would make that motion. Would ask for a second, second. and then we can discuss it. That was George. Yes. Okay. Were there any questions? Uh, as I mentioned before, with respect to the fire claims, uh, we had the fire chief here earlier at finance, uh, which was very helpful, and we appreciate Jim being here. Um, the village will meet its obligations uh, to the city. Uh, they will take care of payment of the individual claims, which were actually made against the city, not against the village. Uh, we, in turn, will recover those dollars from the property owner, or from the property owner. Questions? And there may be some additional smaller bills coming in in the future, but nothing equal to what we have here tonight. Okay. Yeah. No other questions? Okay. All right, then we'll vote on the motion, and we'll start, uh, we have to do roll call, so we'll start, Sandra. Are you in yes. favor of the motion? Yes. Oh, oh Mark, for yes. yes. Did you sneak in or what? Yes. <laughs> yes. Mark is yes. Sandra, yes. Joe? Yes. George? Yes. Colin yes. and Larry, yes. Okay. Right, well, Larry, you. one of the things that I think we need to mention, maybe you did while I was talking to the AV technician just now, but uh, this fire actually would have cost us a whole lot more had it not been for all that mutual aid. You got that right. <laughs> All right, uh, the other item on the agenda, uh, as you know, we had in the plan uh, to purchase a squad car as well as security glass uh, for certain areas within the office. Uh, so the finance committee is recommending that we authorize the uh, uh, village administrator to solicit a loan for the purchase of the squad car uh, and the security glass for the windows in the, uh, in the office area. Uh, for a total amount not to exceed 25000 It's in the, the um, issue statement. And there's actually a couple of other items that I'll need. Uh, need authorization for? Yeah, keep going. I, I thought it. Was that in finance? Yep, back up okay, just I know a little bit. Yep. Okay. Sorry. <coughs> there. Okay. So, that, uh, so I'll correct that motion to move the village administrator be authorized to immediately solicit bids from the local and state lending institutions for a loan to fund the village hall service window project and the police department new squad car purchase in the amount of 31,000 to be repaid in uh, uh, what do we normally do that in three years I'll put down three years 
the loan will incorporate provisions for two loan payments per year with the first payment uh, due in uh, 2010 and no prepayment penalties uh, both of which are our standard uh, loan provision practices so I have that motion is there a second to that motion I'll second it so that we can discuss it okay uh, Go ahead. Uh, while we have approved uh, soliciting a loan in the amount of $31,000, that to me does not mean that we have to spend it down to the last dollar. And what I would ask is that, uh, Gloria, since you are the supervisor that's here now, and I'll use that in a in broad term, if you could ask uh, <laughs> to see if we are still interested in uh, the security well what do we call them here the service the service window the service windows to see if everybody is still in agreement that they want them and the reason I'm asking it is there have has been a change in the personnel uh, since this came up and I think about what precipitated this uh, the interest in these service windows uh, that we had not considered at all when we were building the village hall. And it may be that uh, some people now say, you know, I really don't want to work behind that uh, bulletproof glass. Well, um, my catch on it being in the, um, the uh, general government office with um, all the tax collection, it, it is a security issue. And um, at some point the state might mandate it just because of all the tax collections that we do. Okay. And were, it, were it not for the tax collections, would we still have that issue? I don't know. After what happened, I think everybody kind of feels a little bit vulnerable. But we're going to lose the closeness that we enjoy having when the, the residents come in. That's right. Yeah. And I just ask you to, you know, just consider it. Even that We're approving it as a board, and if this is what the staff wants uh, I don't have a problem with it but I would hate to have to I would hate to put these in and then have the staff saying oh I hate working behind this wall well I can kind of go back and have a, a meeting with my staff and and, and also talk to uh, the chief and see if Becky uh, okay O'Keefe wants it <laughs> we have to we have to use the last names now yes we do yeah <laughs> Okay. So what you're doing is outside of the motion, you're just asking the uh, administrator to say, okay, we'll, we'll approve solicitation of the loan, including that dollar amount. Um, but uh, basically asking, giving her the opportunity to possibly not to do that or not it, the option is to not do it in toto yeah. uh, so we may say well um, might be a good idea for the deputy treasurer to have a window but perhaps uh, Becky greeting the public out front says she doesn't feel she needs it or maybe Becky O'Keefe says she doesn't need it um, and just leaving that that as an option would it make more sense to just approve the squad car and defer that? We've deferred this long enough. I'm not trying to put it off. I'm just saying if there's some question about it, I've worked under the assumption that we that we wanted that. Is someone now saying maybe we don't want that? That's what I'm asking. And again, because the personnel has changed since the event that uh, precipitated this request. That's all. I'm, okay. I'm still saying. Is anyone requesting us not to do this? Uh, no, we, we're all in acceptance of it. Um, ha we kind of, we, we th probably 80% want it. The 20% the reluctancy is the fact that we do like to be able to um, carry on a conversation without like feeling like you, you do have that wall of glass. Sure. The problem is, is that if you don't have that, I mean, especially with the police department, 
it's the the windows they you know because they had to be ada compliant mm -hmm. people can slide right across them and there is no wall between the deputy treasurer and the deputy clerk so if you put one in one and not in the other it really doesn't stop anything Other than the fact <laughs> there's a door there there is a door in between the two offices oh i see And this is for four windows, correct? I thought it was only three, but so you're not, hold on. You're not looking at the window for the uh, clerk of the court? You know, I'm, I apologize, um, and I'm sure that that's why the chief wanted to be here, um, was to... There were four windows, but we were only going to do three, right? Oh. That's how I read it. No, it's glass on four and writing surfaces. Thank you. That's it. Oh. Yes. All four windows, but three of them would have a, a bump oh. out because there's not enough space to write on. Mm -hmm. But the one in the front has enough space to write right. for a customer to write on, okay. so they don't Wrong. need the, the bump out or the writing surface. Okay. okay. E even though the, the question has been raised, me which essentially says, are there any second thoughts about putting in the security glass? The answer seems to be no. That pretty much the consensus of the of the board in terms of what we're what we're talking about here. Okay. We've read, what was that, Larry? The consensus of the board is that we don't do the security glass. No, the cons consensus is. That we still want to install the security glass as originally planned. Yes. Okay. All right. Any other questions related to that? Okay. All right. If not, then we'll uh, vote on the motion to uh, authorize the village administrator to solicit the loans for the squad car and the security windows. And again, we'll start on the other end. Mark? Yes. Sandra? Yes. Joe? Yes. Colleen? Yes. George? Yes. Larry? Yes. Okay. Okay. Public Works. Oh, before we move on to Public Works, <coughs> uh, I'd like to introduce the newest member of our village staff, Becky, Becky Milbrandt, is standing in the back. So if the camera could switch to Becky so everybody in the village mm -hmm. can see you. <laughs> You want to stand up? I want to make sure that everybody has a chance to see you. <laughs> Becky is the new uh, I don't think he's maybe the deputy go to clerk. The podium. Yeah. Oh, there, there we are. Awesome. There we are. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Thank you very much. All right, moving on to public works. Okay, uh, we did not meet last month, but uh, two items did come up, and so we have not talked this over as a public works committee. But they're relatively <laughs> easy, so we thought we would take care of them at the board meeting. Okay. <clears throat> the first one concerns a letter of credit for Delta Construction. Uh, they had been doing improvements to the seventh edition on Summer's Landing. And uh, if you look over the, let's see, I think Cedar Corporation, uh, Kevin has written a letter to Glory about it. And essentially, the remaining construction punch list items were completed in the spring of 2005 and the required two-year warranty period has expired and um, <coughs> uh, Delta has requested that we uh, we release that uh, letter of credit obligation to them and it's to the tune of sixteen thousand six hundred and eighty seven dollars and fifty cents and uh, so essentially the motion that I have is I move that the letter of credit in the amount of $16,687.50 be released to Delta Construction relating to the improvements made to the seventh edition of Summers Landing Subdivision. Is there a second? Second. Any questions on it? Okay. Seeing none, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Okay, thank you. 
another item uh, came up in terms of a contract with St. Croix Tree Service uh, for tree and stump removal. And essentially uh, what we have in front of us is the contract that we had in 2008 has uh, essentially the same dollar amount and same contract as we have for 2009 or what's proposed for 2009. And I don't know that there's a whole lot that we need to discuss there because it does remain the same and the costs are the same. And so what I would recommend that we do is uh, approve the contract with uh, St. Croix Tree Service for tree and stump removal dated the 3rd of February 2009 uh, per the attachments in our, in our booklet. Okay. Is there a second? A second. Any questions? Same contract, same cost. Services, one, one that we have to buy. So, we're certainly not going to be certainly not going to be removing our own trees. Okay, uh, that's a contract. So I think that requires a roll call vote. Are there any other questions for Joe or Public Works? If not, then we'll do a roll call. Start on the other end again. Mark? Yes. Sandra? Yes. Joe? Yes. Larry? Yes. George? Yes. Colleen? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Oh, there is one other item. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Gloria. I had for almost forgotten about this. Uh, we normally have our meetings on Tuesdays, third week of the month. And uh, this uh, coming month of the 17th, is on a Tuesday and there's an election that day so we will not be able to meet at our normal time at 6 o'clock so we plan to meet um, with an abbreviated meeting at 6 o'clock on the 18th I think plan commission meets right at after that at 7 so I think we should be able to get out of here in in an hour uh, there's just a couple items on the agenda they should be relatively smooth to go through so I just wanted to make that notice to everybody here that our the public works meeting has been changed to Wednesday, February 18th at 6 o'clock. Okay. Thank you again, Gloria, and I am. That concludes public works. Okay. Public safety, George? Uh, you have the uh, minutes of the last uh, meeting <coughs> in front of you as well as uh, the chief's uh, report from January 8th. Uh, you'll notice there are three topics on his uh, in his report. One of them is the card grant, and we're looking at uh, we have every reason to believe that the card grant will be approved in the amount of over ninety-two thousand dollars, and that'll take care of um, uh, wages related to compliance checks. Um, you also see that there's some information there um, and some comments about uh, volunteers out on the uh, ice skating rink. Mm -hmm. And if you have any questions on that, we can address that, as well as a modification of an ordinance having to do with school bus warning lights, especially or specifically for the school buses uh, that uh, transport our uh, special needs children. Uh, that'll be a topic of conversation at the February public safety meeting. Okay. And so we'll hold off any further discussion on that one until after that meeting. Uh, the other thing I'd just like, I was invited to attend the uh, Western Wisconsin Intergovernmental Collaborative Meeting on Monday, January 26th, and the topic was sustainable community development, and it was uh, by a professor from the University of Wisconsin River Falls, Kelly Kane. Uh, this information uh, is uh, actually posted on a, the website for the University of uh, Wisconsin River Falls, and um, if you want details, I could go through a lot of detail on sustainability, but um, I, I think it, uh, anyone who's interested in that, either contact me or I'll be more than <coughs> and be glad to point you in the direction of that website. Okay. Uh, the other thing, and this is something that uh, I'll just share with the, uh, with the uh, public, it came to me, it's come to me several times this winter, and so I'd like to pass it on as a request to those people who like to jog, run, walk their dogs, or anything like that, especially early in the morning before the sun comes up. Um, and those who do the same at the end of the day after they come home from work and they're taking the dog out for a walk. 
or they're just out jogging themselves and it's after dark, would you please wear something reflective so that motorists can see you? Uh, specifically, if you're walking along roads that don't have sidewalks and you're walking in the street, you're very difficult to see if you're wearing your black sweats, a black shirt, or a jacket and a black hat. You sort of blend into the night. I've had people tell me the only reason I didn't hit that person was because I saw the reflection off of their sneakers. And so I would ask you to please, you may have the right of way, but that's something you may be saying in a hospital bed somewhere because a motorist just couldn't see you. The uh, reflective equipment I'm talking about, you can buy uh, a reflective jacket or you could just get some reflective tape and put an X on your back. Sandra? Mr. Public Safety Chair, if I could make a addendum to that. I was out the other day um, getting my mail. Um, I live on Helen Street, as you know, and uh, I've noticed there's no posting of speed limit on Helen Street, it seems like, at all. I was it's unable an to aircraft find landing it. strip is what that street has and, become. Um, <laughs> because of the snow buildup, Sorry. I was actually about this far from my right. mailbox. Um, just, I was just missed by a car going very fast, very close to the curb. So the opposite of that is drivers also, please, That's right. just get in my mail. If, if you see a vehicle traveling at excessive speed past your house, please take note of at least the description of the car. Don't call me. Call the police department right here and talk to Becky. Give her a description of the car, and the police department will keep an eye out for that vehicle. It has worked in the past. It will continue to work well. If you notify them, they will do something about it. So thanks for bringing that up. Not this Becky. Not this Becky. <laughs> Becky O'Keefe. <laughs> Watch out for you already. I think I'm finished, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Before we get off public safety, you know, you, as you were looking through your your uh, materials for tonight, there's a huge amount of uh, information in there with respect to the invoices and breaking out the costs and understanding it. Part of what is not in there is also getting back and to some of the you know, various uh, invoices and uh, uh, either getting a much better understanding or. Uh, getting an agreement from the person who sent the invoice or from the entity that sent the invoice to uh, resubmit one in the future, which will be lower or, or to change it. So, uh, so I want to thank Gloria and George for all of the groundwork they did with respect to this. It's a <laughs> lot of work, so thank you. Uh, public welfare? We didn't meet in January. Okay, so there was no meeting, so no report at all. Okay. Park Board? Um, the main thing, we're still considering the skate park um, in Summers Landing. We did have some citizens um, voice some concerns last month at our meeting um, regarding potential for vandalism or um, illegal behaviors. Um, they meant also brought up the fact that there's no um, restroom facilities there. Um, so we're continuing to look into some of these issues. Um, also, I'd like to point out that the park plan is now on the website, thank you, Sandra, um, which kind of outlines what we'd like to accomplish in the next several years. Um, and it, I checked it and it worked. Uh, and I'll say that the skating rink has continues to be a good success. Good. And that's all I have. Okay. All right, um, moving on, uh, new business. Um, it is time to appoint uh, the, the current term yes. for our current representative to the library board. Larry? Yes. Excuse me just one moment. The, uh, Colleen does have one other thing she'd like to talk about. Oh, sure. Yeah, um, it was just brought to my attention that a suggestion um, to name the skating rink. Yep. Uh, Hold, the off Hold off on that one. I was talking about the Woodcrest Park. Oh, the Woodcrest Park. Yeah. We have our new sign for Woodcrest Park. 
And we are going to try to get the other signs throughout the parks to kind of match something like that. Okay. And for someone who may not be familiar, Woodcrest Park is located where? That's the one on 10th Street, okay. part of 10th Street, and then on where Cedar turns into Prairie. Okay. So that's kind of like the models, the model sign, so to speak? Yeah. So. Okay. It's very nice. Good looking. Mm -hmm. very, very nice. Good looking. Okay. Anything else? No. You sure? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moving on, uh, as I mentioned, the uh, the term of our representative to the library board uh, will be soon expiring with the uh, change in the uh, agreement between the participants, uh, the city, the village, and the townships with respect to the library. Uh, that term now uh, will be f uh, starting 5-1 of each, of each year. It's a three-year term. So I would uh, make a motion and recommend Jim O'Connor, uh, to continue to act as the village representative to the library board for a three-year term beginning 5109. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second that. Okay. Any questions on that? If not, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Just a couple of other items. Uh, I did get some information back from the electrical contractor we've been working with with respect to the cost of the generator. The primary question has been really centered around how big of one do we need. Uh, the good news is we're not going to need one as large as we had anticipated. Uh, the current historic demand uh, for us has been about 22.3 kilowatts, and so we'll be able to get by with a 35-watt set. So the quick and dirty estimate says we're probably looking at about $20,000 for a generator, 10000 for the other installation items for a total of 30000 Previously, we had thought it was going to be forty, forty-five thousand. 45000 So it looks like it's going to be significantly less than we had expected. Uh, so we'll probably, hopefully, uh, we'll take that up. It wasn't, obviously, it wasn't on the agenda for tonight. So we'll add that to the uh, March meeting. Well, Larry, did... Did someone actually take a look at the facility that is, or what's in place downstairs? Yes. You know, that big switch that we paid quite a bit for during the installation, that shouldn't, okay. Yep, yep. All right. Yep. Um, they actually did a pretty comprehensive analysis of what was needed, went back through the actual usage uh, from, from uh, Excel, uh, got the data, came over, inspected what electrical capabilities do we have now. So um, it'll be a, It'll be a very simple installation, very honestly. Uh, oh, okay. And then I just want to remind people we'll have two board meetings in March, one on March 3rd, and then because of the April elections, we'll have one on March 31st. And that's all I had. Go ahead, Jenny. Um, yes. Um, w uh, I guess I'm going to ask the two committee members for public welfare um, whether there is a meeting needed for February um, since Jim won't be in attendance or is oh, there any he won't be in attendance then right okay is there then no. no okay and then um, we will be having a statewide primary on February 17th um, no local um, need for a primary, but it is a statewide, so there will be that, and that's it. Okay. <coughs> okay. That's it. I don't have any other items on the agenda. So the chair would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Uh, second. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Meeting is adjourned.